Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today we are going to talk about what is the difference between the hydrolysis and the denaturation of the proteins in terms of the structures affected, explain why insulin cannot be taken orally but must be injected. Take a look at this picture, what we see here, we see here egg which is fried, partially fried, here we see that part which is still raw and here is the white which is denaturated. So what happened with this part of the egg? Take a look at this picture. Here we see structures of the polypeptide chain which it makes. So primary structure is just polypeptide sequence, uh, amino acids connected by peptide bonds. And here we see a secondary structure in the form, for example, alpha helixes and beta pleated sheets. Tertiary structure when secondary structure would fold on itself and would make a protein. Sometimes it can be a final form, sometimes this protein would aggregate even into more complex structure with other proteins making quaternary structure. An example of the quaternary structure would be insulin here, which consists of two polypeptide chains, which are connected by two disulfide bridges. Of course, on this picture, just linear form of each polypeptide is shown. So back to this part of the egg, which has been denaturated, what happened to it? This quaternary structure and tertiary structure have been disrupted. And of course, some of the secondary structures also have been changed because the structures are held primary by hydrogen bonding, which is weak forces and can be disrupted by just heating uh, our proteins to the temperature about 100 degrees. So basically what we see here that proteins here lost their function. This enzymes lost their function and structure of the proteins has been changed. Heat can affect ionic bonding, which we can see as a salt bridges between our groups of the amino acids with positive charge and negative charge. Also because protein chain would be changed the conformation, some of the hydrophobic interactions can be changed and hydrogen bonding also can be affected, but covalent bonding like between two cysteines which make disulfide bridges is not going to be affected because this is strong covalent bonding which is not going to be disrupted by temperature, at least a temperature which we use to fry egg. The same is true for the sequence of the amino acids which are held by peptide bond. And here is a peptide bond as you see. So when we are talking about denaturation of the proteins, the structures would be disrupted and to least extent would be disrupted probably a secondary structure and primary structure is not going to be affected at all. Now let's talk about hydrolysis. So what's the difference between hydrolysis and denaturation? Take a look. Here we have one amino acid, another amino acid, and through the process of the condensation synthesis, one molecule would be produced, and here we can get peptide bond between these two amino acids. And reverse process is going to be a process when these two amino acid or the whole polypeptide chain would be hydrolyzed, so we call this hydrolysis, and instead two amino acids would be produced and one molecule of water is going to be used in this process. Of course, this doesn't happen by itself. It's speed up by presence of certain enzymes and certain pH, which we can find in our digestive system, in our stomach and our intestine. Now let's answer the question, explain why insulin cannot be taken orally but must be injected because this is hormone which is made 
of amino acids. And if we'll, for example, take it orally, then each amino acid here would be broken. And this is how our digestive system works. And it's not going to do what it have to do as a hormone, which regulates intake of the sugar by our cells. This is explanation why insulin have to be injected and cannot be taken orally because it has to bypass our digestive system and have to be injected directly in our blood. But you may also ask how other medicine works if uh, it would be digested to single amino acids. And this is how we absorb amino acids. And the answer is going to be very simple. Most of the medicine that we take orally is not based on the proteins of any form and not going to be affected by our digestive juices and enzymes. If you have, for example, problems with your hair, skin or nails, many companies advertise to take some um, medicine, for example, collagen in the form of the tablets. But now you know that it doesn't make any sense because all the proteins are going to be broken to single residues or amino acids. So it doesn't make any sense to purchase collagen in the form of the tablets. So this is just a protein. You can also eat egg and get the same effect for the just small fraction of the price of collagen as food additive. But I also understand that some people may say that they took this type of uh, food additive and the nails become better, the hair and skin now glowing. But I can tell you and I can assure you this is all placebo effect. It's also very powerful thing, uh, this placebo effect, when you believe in something, then you can get certain effect which is not only psychological, sometimes it also can be physiological. After watching this video, I hope now you understand why some medicine we can take orally and some have to be injected. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video. Goodbye.